Hi! Uh, so I'm going to show you some watercolor techniques that you're going to use today and this week. Uh, so today you're just going to be doing some experiments and this week we are going to be painting outside to explore the element of art space. So first what you need to do is make sure you have a watercolor pan. Mine looks a little bit different than yours. Uh, I always suggest grabbing at least three brushes, so one that's larger, uh, one that's a medium size, and then also a tiny brush for details. You also need to have a container of water. We couldn't have watercolor without water. A sponge, pencil, uh, and you're also gonna, obviously gonna have watercolor paper. So first what I'm gonna ask you to do is to set up your page, I don't know if you can see this. Set up your page like this. Uh, I know it's going to be backwards for you, but you'll notice that it says um, dry brush, wet on dry, and wet on too wet. This is where your little experiments are going to go, um, and then this is where you're going to apply them just for like a one day uh, mini watercolor experiment. Please don't spend too much time on the actual painting uh, because you're only going to have one day. If you want to work on it more, you got to come during lunch. Okay, so... First, I'm going to show you wet into wet. Uh, this is good for doing large areas of color, um, for blocking in your background, all that sorts of stuff. With watercolor painting, you always want to work um, using the most water to using the least amount of water, and I'll show you why. Um, so wet into wet. You need to wet the paper first. So I'm just going to use the water from my little water container. Um, Make sure it's clean because you wanna you don't want it staining the paper. So if you have already been painting, you may need to dump and get another clean container of water. So I painted in just the square on my paper. It's just wet with water. Uh, now I'm going to take a little bit of pigment. Uh, so I'm gonna wet my brush. Take a little bit of pigment from my watercolor pan, and then. So wet to wet is really good, again, for covering large areas. It's also really good for doing gradients or having um, one color kind of fade into another color or one color kind of fading to white. Um, so that's my wet into wet. And then also, so that's for doing like large areas. Right now I have just a gradient from orange to white. Um, you can also do really soft lines with this. So if I um, grab another color, so I'll grab some blue, so I have my complementary colors. I'm just going to drop a little bit of blue in to make some dots. And you'll notice that the dots are really soft because the pigment is actually just like spreading out into the water. Um, so you can use your sponge for multiple things. One, to kind of get some water off your brush. Also, uh, if you make a mistake, or if you just kind of want to pull up some of your pigment to lighten it, you can use your sponge to soak up some of the pigment and water. Um, so wet into wet is a really easy one to kind of undo if you made a mistake. Because there's so much water, it's easiest to kind of like pull some of the pigment out. And then you can also have some like more defined dots and such if you pull out some of that water. All right, so that's wet into wet. Now I'm gonna show you wet on dry. So with this one, um, I'm gonna get a lot of water on my brush and I'm just gonna put the water into one of my empty pans. So this should be kind of on the cover of your watercolor pan. Mine is actually like slides out from underneath. So I'm just adding some water into this little tray and I'll use green. So now with my brush being pretty wet, I'm just gonna pick up some pigment and then drop it into the water here. So now I have real liquidy pigment. Uh, it's gonna be more transparent. You should get some softer lines. And so my paper is gonna be dry and I'm just gonna paint with it. So you can see that it um, is transparent it's good to kind of like get some soft lines, nothing too harsh. 
Um, because there's a lot of water in it, I can still like kind of push the pigment around with my brush. And so that is wet onto dry. So again, it's good for like soft lines, um, softer details. You get harder outlines than you do with wet on wet. It's not going to kind of like spread beyond where your water is. Um, it's really nice, like classic watercolor technique. And then the last one I'm going to show you is dry brush. Uh, so this one, this technique is the best for like the tiny details or if you want like really, really rich, bold colors that are not diluted with water. Uh, so for this, I am going to still kind of wet my brush, but instead of having it like dripping with water, I'm gonna get most of the water off of my brush with the sponge. Uh, so I'm gonna get some pigment. And if this is the first time you're kind of like using that color, you may need to add a little more water to the pigment. And now I'm going to go ahead and use it. So you'll notice sometimes that you'll get like kind of a scratchy texture if you didn't get enough water on it. Uh, so you can always go back and kind of like blur that out if you want with a tiny bit more water. And so this technique is what you're going to want to use to get all of your like fine details, your hard lines. Um, it's going to be pretty opaque or not see-through uh, if you're using the dry brush technique because you're going that's where you're going to have like the most pigment on your brush. So you can see I have all three different techniques. They're all kind of like contained to those boxes I drew. Also, you'll notice that on my wet on wet, because it's not dry, that the pigment is running. So just be aware that that is something that can happen. Um, you'll want to make sure that it's dry before you layer it or else the pigment will just kind of like fade into the water. Um, watercolor is not permanent. So I just wanted to show you, say I have some dry brush details and I want to go over it with another color. If I go over this with water, it's going to blend out. So you'll see that the blue, even though it was pretty much dry, I can rehydrate it and like move it around again and manipulate it. So just be aware of that when you're doing your paintings. So after you finish with these three different little experimental techniques, then you're gonna go on. Uh, I have a really quick, just kind of sketch of a tree. Um, so you're gonna apply these three to just a really, really quick um, painting that you're gonna do today. Again, you only have today to do this, so please don't make it anything too complex. If you want to finish it up, you can stay during lunch.